item number three, director announcements, reports, and comments. Um, if any board member has an announcement or a comment they'd like to make, we'll we'll call. Time. Yeah, we can do a roll call. Go ahead. Okay. I will tell you everything's good. <laughs> Let's see. <That's> almost. <laughs> <laughs> director Hages. Here. Director Johnston. Here. Director Finch. Here. Director Thilke. Here. Chair Baggerly. Here. Um, if you haven't got your microphones on, it might be a good time to try that now. Uh, director announcements and reports and comments. Uh, is there anything from the mutuals, Peter? Um, just the water flow coming out of our canyon. We have about 260 GPM coming out of our tunnel, and we are exclusively on tunnel water right now. Um, without any supplementation from Casitas. And the West Fork and North Fork surface sources are probably somewhere 1,200, 1,500 GPM. And those aren't even being used because of demand being so low with the cool temperatures. So it's definitely um, the, the bounty of water that we've had this winter is uh, we're enjoying that. And hopefully uh, it will last uh, further into the summer. I fixed it. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else, Peter? Are you going to be storing that, anything you can in the pond? Oh, no. no. Okay, thanks. Sorry, Russ. Ojai Water Conservation District? Uh, no meeting. However, Emily and I did meet with the county at uh, the Spreading Ponds, Recharge Ponds, and... Uh, Glenn, I'm blanking, but anyway, for and Shepherd and a crew came up and we walked it and oh, really? we did not open. They didn't bring the tool to open and look down in, but they assured us that they were absolutely full. We talked about s full of, of sediment. We talked about some methods to get it out in the short run, but more importantly, it will always fill with sediment while you're waiting on the flow to come up. And so the design, we've got to have some kind of bypass that allows it <clears throat> to initially bypass by the valve so the sediment doesn't accumulate so that once you finally get to that point and you open the valve, you'd have clear a clear box. Yeah. Because otherwise, we're always going to be in this. Because right now, if there wasn't sediment that we went on Monday, the whatever that was, 20, well, 10 days ago or 13 days ago, um, and if we had, we had the elevation down at, at Grand Avenue, if you didn't have a plugged up box, you could have been diverting water uh, legally or per the regulate specs, whatever whatever the proper terminology is, but we have a plugged up box, so then. Extortion, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> so th it takes confined space entry with a rescue team present to clean out the box, and Emily's making arrangements to get some temporary easements through their creek crossing, which is open, which is across the Coltis's parcel. The county's easement is completely shot and will be f until the water is gone. So that puts us past the time when it does any good. And they'll bring in a vacuum truck at the cost of eight to $10,000 was their guess and suck it out, dump the sediment back into the de -sedi the sedimentation ponds, um, probably of several loads and hopefully get it done in a day or two. But every Day that passes, the water drops just a little bit more, and so once we get it desilted, whether we will have the flow that they could even test it. Would a vacuum truck that's used for uh, sewage vaults like yeah, that's a that. would work? <clears throat> that's the type they'll bring in. I think they're bringing. I think last this is the second time they've done it, so they have experience with somebody. Um, I think they're bringing in the eighteen wheeler style, not the ten wheeler style, the big one. Yeah, but. 
I don't know. There are quite a few of them around. Oh, and they, all, they belong to all of our agencies. So and, and the oil field uses a ton of them. Yeah. Um, and then we off just said, you know, we could get guys with buckets. <laughs> um, and you could have it done in half a day, I guarantee it. Um, but no, Should no. I call Glenn and tell him that he should check with Casitas to see if that truck That's, could get out there? By all means. Okay. I think anything. I will. So that it was Roger was also present. He walked along with us. Anything that I've No, you covered it. You know, it was frustrating to to listen to, you know, why it's not getting cleaned out. But Right. I but I think Emily did get uh, permission to come in the other way. She got a verbal, but I think they were trying to get the actual physical form. The and that that was, you know, Okay, I don't, I don't know either. Um, but it will, my comment to him was nobody's going to be willing to take it on unless you can prove that it works. And then we talked about some both temporary solutions to keep the sediment out and maybe long-term solutions so that it just flows, stays clean. Screen cleaning system that absolutely does not work and will not work, exactly. and it makes it very hard to get in to clean the, the sediment out. Right, and I think if you went with something that just where it flowed out of the box as it was going, you wouldn't even need the screen cleaning system. And we also asked, is there any chance of getting the authorities that be, which is I don't know if it's Nymph Snoa fishing game or who up to look at it because I, there is no vert or uh, suction or negative pressure against the screen we used leaves and set leaves on it and they immediately float away so a fish to the, this layman would not get stuck against the screen if the leaf couldn't get stuck a big fat leaf couldn't get stuck I don't think a fish could get stuck but our fish up here are pretty smart. Uh, they're not going to get stuck. Sorry. Thanks for that report. Um, City of Ojai? Nothing to report. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Casitas Municipal Water District Lake Level. The lake level elevation right now is 505.17 feet above, um, um, above mean sea level. It makes it 44.3% with 105,643 acre feet in storage. And I'll pass this down to Cece so she has it. Uh, community Facilities District? I don't anything? have anything. Nothing? Okay. Um, jo uh, John, General Manager comments or reports? Two things I wanted to report this evening. Uh, for about the last two weeks, uh, Jordan, Peter, Cece, and I have all been working on a public records request from Best, Best, and Krieger related to the litigation. And so we are expected to have that, the final uh, response to them tomorrow. And they have asked for a lot of information related to the basin. And so we've had to go back to DBSNA, who did the model and get those records. Jordan Keir has had to provide some records, and NCC's had some. We've had to get the database guy to help us with that. So it's been quite a bit of an effort over the last two weeks, but uh, we expect to have that filed and sent to them tomorrow. So You're sending it instead of asking them to come and review well, it? Well, no. We've, what we've done is because there are a lot of electronic files, uh -huh. we're going to send a letter, and, and Peter's actually reviewing it. I drafted it up this afternoon. It just has links to a Dropbox account. Good. And so we're trying to keep it as simple as possible and as low cost as possible. So uh, That might be strange for VVK, but um, yeah. we'll see what happens. Uh, and I verified the links work, so I got to the Dropbox and okay. saw those files. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention, and I know it's later on the agenda, but I wanted to give you a, a heads up early in, in the meeting. I added an item that's called Future Agenda Items. It's on 10A. 
and it'll look like this. And part there's a couple of reasons I did this because I wanted the board to have an idea of what we're bringing forward in future meetings. Also, I saw it as an opportunity for the board to say, hey, we want to see this on a future meeting. And what I also was trying to avoid was we don't want to put a bunch of stuff that we're always recording on the, on the agenda um, that maybe we don't have anything and it kind of clutters the agenda. And so what I'd like to do is keep those items here. And if any of the board members want to report, we, it'll still be on the agenda so we can report out through this list instead of have it as, as a specific agendized item each meeting. So um, if you want to look at that tonight during your meeting and if you have anything you want to add to that or any suggestions about changes, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, this is the time and place for public comments on items that are not appearing on the agenda. Do we have any report on the uh, level of the groundwater or the capacity? Has it come up? I assume it has if the lakes come up. Um, uh, that gra item the five. graph. What? Item, item five. five. Okay, there's, we're a, not, there's a graph. Okay. It has come up considerably. Um, there is in your agenda, there's this graph. <laughs> right. So if you look at that, that'll give you an idea. You can see where the last line, uh, we've got a significant rise in the water table. And it's probably still rising. Yeah, That's what Jordan said. Yeah, there's a lot of water in the creek. I noticed when I came up Creek Road earlier. It's still out there, right. Okay, this is uh, public comments. I have one card. Uh, Bruce, you want to come up? Bill, you want to? Uh, sure, come on. Oh, good afternoon. So I'm representing the Upper Ventura River Groundwater Agency and my comment here. As you know, we have a cooperative agreement with you folks to share office space. And uh, we've been using CC for the last year and a half, I guess. So we've been, and we've been looking for our own administra uh, agency administrator. And we finally found one. Uh, it's an employee with the uh, Miners Oaks Water Districts that's going to help us out. In fact, we're going to replace CC with two people, uh, the person from Miners Oaks and a bookkeeper. So our agreement with you folks in terms of our sharing office space will probably end the next month or two. Okay. Uh, the person that we're hiring from Miners Oaks, she actually going to stay as an employee and do work on overtime. In effect, our office will be in Miners Oaks Municipal Water District office and we're going to work out an agreement with them to share office costs and stuff like that. So, uh, as That's a, a small office. Where are you guys? It is a small office, but we have a... It's going to work? It'll work, yeah. They've got enough space here. We're still growing and learning and trying new things, so uh, that's where we... I just want to let you know that that would happen. My other comment on the update on the adjudication alternative might fit better under item 9B if you want me to hold off on that on the... Uh, yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah, okay. Anyway. That's where we are, and thank you all for uh, having this agreement with us. It's been a good uh, relationship, and well, I'm, I think we're gonna miss you guys. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if Cece will, but <laughs> I think she's relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Okay. You gonna let me talk, or yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, last Thursday at the EDC VC board meeting. Uh, there was an announcement that Susan Mulligan is retiring, which uh, I regretted uh, significantly. Don't know who, if her replacement's been named, but I view her as a really uh, bright light of, uh, of insight uh, for our whole region, and I really wanted to just state for the record, regret seeing her retire. Um, I, um, um, and uh, anyway, I just, that's I, enough said. Um, the other observation I want to make, listening to everyone about Mr. Finch, about the spreading grounds, is it seems to me we ought to acknowledge that when you have a systemic problem, namely an agency that was in charge of designing and installing something that is now failing by design and seeming lacking in motivation to address the situation of failing by design, that perhaps it's time to come together and think about another agency managing the facility. Um, just a thought. Thank you. I think they, they're, they're after that, too. <laughs> and, and since it doesn't work, it's probably going to go real cheap. Right? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, item seven is consent items. Uh, a director may.
pull an item off for discussion if, if they so choose. All we have is the minutes from February 28th. Pleasure of the board. Move. Second. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Was that Johnny that second? Is, yes. He's usually not that quiet. Yes. But. Director Johnson. Yes. Director Finch. Yes. Director Selke. Yes. Chair Baggins. Yes. Thank you. We'll move on to item eight, the action items. So uh, we have the treasurer's report for February 2019. There's a spreadsheet and then extraction charges by period for the board to review and approve. Are there any comments? Some changes to the website. Maybe the minutes and the board packets are posted. I like it. It looks good. Oh, good. Thank you. It doesn't work 100% yet, though. I couldn't get the minutes up, but okay. It, but it's a lot better. Oh, good. Yes, yeah. they um, they updated the the system, and I'm training on that. So yeah, and Thank and some of those changes were in response to a new state law that said. Those links had to be right up front on a web page for the public to access okay. easily with it and not use drop down menus. Oh, really? I just read that every special district had to have a web page. I didn't realize there were some um, finer details to it. Yeah, the, the law was passed last year, and I think it had to be implemented by January 1st, but we didn't quite make that deadline. But I'm sure there's a lot of people haven't made it. Well, the website police will be around. <laughs> and there's still updates coming, keep coming from that source. Okay, uh, any changes, corrections, um, comments on the treasurer's report or the extraction reports? We just sent out the um, <coughs> January, February, March statements, so they'll be coming in. Um, let's see, yesterday at Casitas Municipal Water District, we took an action to um, refurbish a couple of wells on the uh, uh, San Antonio wells, and we also took an action to drill a new well uh, on the uh, mutual side. So we're really moving through the, the uh, well field, making sure that it's tip-top um, the location of that last well you mentioned? I don't know for sure. It's it's on the other side from the San Antonio uh, Creek Wells. Uh, Mutual 6, I think it's called. Anything uh, for the Treasury report? Anybody have any questions? If there aren't, the pleasure of the board. I move to approve. We have a motion. Second. And we have a second. We have a roll call, please. Director Hages? Yes. Director Johnston? Yes. Director Finch? Yes. Director Selke? Yes. Chair Baggerly? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on. Uh, the next. Item is 8B, uh, the annual report. We have to do this report every, every year because we turned in an alternative uh, to the Department of Water Resources, and we have one completed. I read it, and I liked it. Um, do you have, any of the board members have uh, comments on the annual report? Uh, you had a, um, I just had formatting a quick, issue. Quick, right? Yeah, just a couple of minor formatting issues, and I'll I'll get that taken care of, and certainly we'll get uh, Jordan to take draft out of it, and uh, I have to have that posted by sometime Monday at the latest. Right. 
Do you want a motion? Yes, I do. I move to approve the annual report. Thank you. Second. And we have a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Director Hages? Yes. Director Johnston? Yes. Director Finch? Yes. Director Thilke? Yes. Chair Baggerly? Yes, and if you haven't read it, it's good reading. Um, get yourself a copy. And we're going to post that to the website once it's finaled. Yes. yes. Please. Okay, item 8C. Regina, you're up. Uh, me too. Yes, that? <laughs> you too, rest. Uh, thanks for having me here tonight. I just got out of my son's spring break the last week and a half. Um, so forgive me. I'm just an hour away from the back country of Ojai right now. Um, I'm here for three reasons. One, to invite you all to an event, April 29th through 30th. Um, we're having a two-day event for you, um, and I'll explain a little bit about it. Um, it's called Localizing California Waters Ventura to Slow Wa Regional Water Summit. So I, number one, I wanna make sure you're invited. Number two, I'm here also to ask, not for any money, but just to see if you guys would want to be a supporting member, which means your logo and your name, and that way you can be on the agenda um, and, and that you support the event. Thirdly, I'm here to answer questions. So I do have a little uh, PowerPoint. Um, we'll go through it. I think it's actually a little too heavy on the text, but um, we'll go through it real quickly. Um, so essentially what uh, this event is, is it's funded by a grant from the Water Foundation, as well as other members um, throughout the state. It's a regional conversation about water for, it's not a public conversation, it's only for water managers, land use managers, and natural resource managers in a space in which to have a discussion about tools um, and approaches that work or could work in this area and then to answer questions and come up with key action plans for the Ventura River. Uh, the first day, let me give you a little bit of background. These events we put on throughout the state uh, every other year, we have an event called Localizing California Waters um, up near actually where I live because I'm lazy and I don't like to drive too far, uh, near Yosemite. Um, and we have this discussion. Um, it happens every other year. Last year, we had 58 different organizations and agencies come together and say, what we really need is to talk and have regional conversations. And then we're going to have that input come back together on the state platform. Um, so again, they agreed to two regional meetings. We were funded by the Water Foundation to have some seed money to have those conversations. And throughout the conference, they identified two places they wanted to have regional conversations. One was Ventura and one was Sonoma. So the Ventura one was slated for April or May. The second one is Sonoma slated for uh, early October. Uh, essentially, what is localizing California waters? It's essentially more of a participation-based um, discussion um, where we have state agencies come in and also participate in a way um, that has a streamlined approach and a safe spot to have conversations about things that don't work. We're there to help create those conversations that normally you would not want to have, and so we ask people to bring with them the water managers, land use managers, and natural resource managers, their briefcase full of problems that they have and actually lay it on the table and try to get some things actually worked out. The state agencies and other jurisdictions come as well, and they come there to help find solutions. And it's been a, typically a really well attended, and it's, it's actually removed quite a few barriers already in the last four to five years that we've been holding it. Um, these are some of the folks who have been on the steering committee. Um, you'll see there's actually one that I need to remove. The Upper Ventura Groundwater Association has not had their meeting and we haven't been able, so I need to remove them because they're not officially on this list. But um, Bruce was part of the steering committee calls. Uh, we have everyone from the California Governor's Office of Planning and Research to the City of San Luis Obispo, all the different IRWMs, the groundwater basins, and whatnot. 
And apologies for me not inviting you guys to be on the steering committee. That was my um, bad. Um, our needs statement here is essentially the, the, th the three county approach is because the three counties, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and Ventura have similar problems. And so we decided to go ahead and not just look at Ventura on the first day. We, we were going to put all three counties together. So we have San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and Ventura counties all coming together talking about what problems they have and what solutions they've encountered. And we also have some experts from even coming outside the state and within the state to bring forth some toolkits or approaches that might work here. Can I ask what a land manager is? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, everyone's a land manager, but someone who has a significant impact on the land. So ideally, landowners, um, especially landowners who are really using their, utilizing their land and water resources, um, is what we call land managers. So when I say it's not public, I just mean we're not, it's an invite only, um, and we're looking for land managers, meaning land owners, um, who would want to participate. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, the f what it looks like is the first day is the three counties are invited. We're going to go over tools or approaches that are innovative, tools that would help intersect fire issues, flooding issues, with water security issues. Of course, we might touch on in-stream flows as well. I think you see that up here. Um, and so the first day is all about what are the tools that are innovative and creative that could either work here or have worked here, meaning the three-county area. So some of the case studies will be they have worked in this area. Some of the case studies will be we're pretty sure that they could be something really important that would work here. At the end of that day, we're getting so many people who want to present on that day. We decided to have a poster session. This is at the Ojai Valley Inn, and thanks to the Ojai Valley Inn, they did donate their um, facilities for this. So um, we're going to have a poster session, uh, poster session and a reception, and we already have over 35 different posters. And those are different approaches and studies and case studies. Um, that can help land managers, natural resource managers, or water managers. Um, so that should be a, a fun day for everyone to come to, the April 29th. The second day, what we decided to do is focus in on the Ventura. Um, and so we're going to be focusing just on the Ventura watershed and saying, river watershed and saying, okay, now we have all these different tools. <coughs> what actually do we need to solve? What's the real conversations like the spreading grounds and other things that we need to solve? On that day, we do have the entire division water rights for the state water board coming. They're coming with an olive branch. They're there to listen. They also have some different innovative uh, ideas they want to put forth. Uh, we have wildlife conservation board coming with about, oh, let's see, $600 million trying to help you guys spend the money. Um, DWR is coming um, with, with their suitcase of money as well. So there'll be tools, olive branches, and also some guidance, and then they're there to have a conversation on the second day. Um, so this is your, this is your, I'm doing, we're doing this for you guys. I hope you guys do attend. If you need help attending, it's $90 uh, to attend. Um, I'd be happy to invite any of the board members here to attend for free. We really want you there. Um, and with that, uh, I'd love to answer any questions about the event. Let's see if there's any more slides. Oh, we do have some really notable speakers. Uh, Felicia Marcus, um, she was the State Water Board Chair um, prior to uh, the reappointment uh, with Joaquin Esquelvia now stepping in. James Familetti, uh, or Jay Familetti, who um, used to be in charge of the GRACE satellite, but also still works with uh, NASA and JPL, uh, monitoring groundwater. So he uh, works strictly in groundwater. Uh, again, we have the majority of all the Division of Water Rights staff, uh, Bob Wilkinson from UC Santa Barbara, Andy Fisher from UC Santa Cruz talking about different flood projects that can work for smaller types of ag, not the large flood mar um, that works in, in the San Joaquin Valley, but 
how to do financial incentives for essentially farming water um, and still having sustainable agricultural systems. Um, so that's Andy Fisher. Um, NOAA and NIMS are sending some speakers. Uh, and some other folks like Brock Dolman are also coming. Um, so, let's see what else my staff put on this slide. <laughs> Here's some of the topics. These are on the website if you guys want to look. Um, this is a lot of text that we don't need to go over, I think, here. And again, I'm just here to invite you. And also, the action item here is if you would like to have OBGMA listed with some of the other supporters with your logo and your name as a supporter of the event. Let's get that taken care of now. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Before you take action, um, I'd like to know whether the board has had an interest in appointing someone to attend or, you know, do you have someone you want to see attend? I mean, I, I don't want to show up and spend your $90 if you don't want me to be there, so. Oh, she just said it was And free. again, any, any of the OBG may, f I, I would waive your fee. Also, I'll, I'll tell you right now, we're working on a panel that I need probably one of you to uh, be on the panel. <laughs> but I will take that up independently. <clears throat> well, I, I've already signed up through Casitas, so it wasn't free. <laughs> sure they, held they out. have all the I money. Should have held out. They have all the money. <laughs> Thanks, Russ. <laughs> uh, do you need a motion to put? I don't do, see. Yeah, do uh, put put our logo. Throw it into whatever you were just asking for. I'm all for it. I move that. We have a second. I'll second it. Okay. It was free, right? Yeah, it was free. <laughs> if if you are a supporter, it's free. Yes. Are there any um, motions? And Richard, second. I have a roll call. Yes. I'm do it with Director Hayes. Rather than call roll every time. Okay. We're not well, the, actually, the uh, the new Brown Act requirement says we have to do a, a roll call every time. Yes. Director yeah. Johnston. Yes. Director Finch. Yes. Director Thilke. Yes. Chair Beverly. Yes. Thanks, Regina. Yeah, all right, thanks. And um, I have one more. It's uh, for a later date of the discussion, but in case I sneak out early, uh, we were, it looks like we're recommended for funding on the WCB grant. So uh, April 4th, uh, I'll be going to Sacramento, and it looks like OBGMA will be getting $160,000. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank and you. And the city of Ojai is getting 510000 Wow. Congratulations. Recommended or approved? It's approved April 4th, but I've never seen the board not approve. Okay, so that's, you got the inside story. I got the inside story. Well, they sent out an official letter. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so congratulations. Is our, is our grant for the Perch Zone study? That, that is in, yeah, so that's 100 and, uh, I think it's 100 and, I was just looking it up, so I didn't tell you the wrong number, and now I can't, I think it's 159,000. Um, there's a little bit more than just the Perch um, Zone study. Yeah. Great. So that's good news. Congratulations, Thank everyone. Okay. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah. Are these grants restricted or unrestricted grants? Are they designated as restricted grants? I, I don't know what you're um, specific to a project. Specific to a project, there's a lot of leeway as long as we have the intent of uh, water security with in stream flow, um, then you, we can always change the line item on it. So we have to do it when we're doing the contract. Just to remind you that the contracts under the Resource Conservation District for Ventura County, they'll be the ones negotiating the contract. So if we, I'll be asking uh, the OBGMA to review um, and all the other partners to make sure that our scopes of work are what we need them to be because it was a, almost a year ago that we wrote the grant. Right. Yeah. So yes. Are these essentially planning grants with uh, you know, implementation grants to come down the road? Yes. Um, and I'm sorry I'm speaking out of turn, uh, that I'm speaking on a later discussion item. Uh, but the, there will be implementation money uh, coming available uh, at the end of August. They're about to announce the date. And so if for some reason we get the studies done quick enough that we understand what we want to implement, um, or even we think of something else we want to implement, implementation money will be available uh, for uh, proposals the end of August. 
And uh, to give you an idea, they got, I think, uh, they had $80 million to spend this time around. They got proposals for $36 million. They only funded $12 million. Um, and of the planning grants, they uh, got nine proposals, and they only funded three. Uh, because they only had a pot for two and a half million. Well, we asked for 1.8 million, and uh, so we took most of it. Okay. So, thank you. Question. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Johnny. Uh, uh, Regina, when you refer to we and our doing this, are you referring to Sierra or? Watershed Progressive, we did write the grant, okay. yes, and for, for with the Resource Conservation right. District. And, and is part of the idea of doing a lot of this, uh, you know, kumbaya, uh, uh, consortium forming uh, to position us in a, uh, a better position for future grants? Is that part of the? Well, we never want grants to be the reason we're doing anything, but it will make us, <laughs> a smart man told me that. I think yep. it might have been you, Mr. Johnston. Um, we want to be, but it will line us up to have a better strategy, yes, to apply for funding that's coming down the line. But we have to figure out what it is that we want to do first and then ask for the funds. Good. So but, it, I, but I was referring more to the the idea of having these uh, pulling people together yes. on a broader scale in order to be, have a a higher credit a credibility in Sacramento when we ask for or we apply for a grant. It will be one of it will be <laughs> one definitely of, one of the um, uh, outcomes from this meeting. Right. Yes, yeah. and hopefully also one of the larger outcomes I'm hoping will be removing some barriers between the agencies and and them seeing what we need to have happen here in the valley. Mm. So. Well, well there, excuse me for interrupting, but will there be designated expectations for these outcomes? No. There are no designated no. expectations, so it's just, just giving the money as a grant. Then. No, there's designated uh, outcomes for the grants. Okay, that's yes. what I'm asking. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, are they, they going to present those in the contract that's going to come to the board? Yes. Yes. So. It's a nice idea to get free money and to be put on the list and so on and so forth. But uh, what are the expectations? What hoops yeah, right. do we have to jump through to get Correct. Them? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they bring those too, Larry. <laughs> Lots of hoops. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I just want to add that um, we did already help put out two other grants through federal through NIFWIS funds to help pay for some of the matching funds that were required. So so there's even more money that might be coming in as well. So we did that with Carnegie Mellon and others. All right. Okay. I understand that you put out a, an appeal to have different organizations uh, contribute to the conference by paying for some lunches. Uh, is that still uh, kind of an open question? We did. So Ojai Valley Inn is... Um, uh, donating their facilities and a third of the meal cost, uh, but that was, you know, what they could do. They couldn't move any further than that. The Water Foundation paid for a little bit of the logistical cost, but other than that, we didn't have any other funding. I was hoping to make the conference free, um, but we ended up paying for, uh, asking for $90 to pay for half of everyone's food, and so we were looking for some sponsors for lunch. Um, uh, I did, I, at this point, um, I wasn't here to approach you all for money. If you have deep pockets, um, feel free to pitch in, but I wasn't here in front of the OBGMA to ask for funding. Um, but yes, we do, we do need funding, and uh, we are uh, not a, uh, when I say this is put on by the Water Foundation, um, you know, they give us maybe six grand, so uh, a lot of this we do through other grants, and sewing things together and through a partnership. So. Well, the, the ask for support for the meals is a small part of the cost of the whole thing. Yes, yes, we're trying to make it accessible. So um, the $90 to attend, um, typically it actually costs much more than that uh, to have someone attend. But we wanted to make it accessible, especially for land managers who might not have the funds available um, or for different water agencies who might not have the funding available to send their, their um, people. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks, much. everyone. Gina. We'll move on to item nine, the discussion items. Uh, item 9A is the groundwater management plan objectives. John, did uh, um, 
I didn't get anything from Jordan. He's absent tonight. So, so we'll move this we'll to the next agenda. Next meeting. Okay, 9B is the City of Ventura amended cross complaint Ventura River update and discussion. Uh, Peter, is there anything to update us on? Oh, very little. Uh, the case has been transferred to the Los Angeles Superior Court and it's now sitting there waiting to be assigned to a judge. <clears throat> so that's. Well, I bet they're all just lining up waiting to take that one, aren't they? It, it should be a judge who's familiar with, you know, number one, complex litigation, and then hopefully some experience with groundwater law, water right. law in general. Okay. But, uh, yeah, just more, you know, hurry up and wait. There's a uh, uh, mediation in Los Angeles on the 22nd of April, and it involves the, somehow the top 10 users from the basin have been identified. Uh, and I've been contacted by our attorney, Paul Blast, and I'll be going down there and t attending that mediation with him. So that's one event that's happening on the 22nd. Thank you. Anything else? Um, Bruce, did you want to? Sure. <coughs> you know, uh, the last meeting I mentioned that, <coughs> excuse me, the Ventura River Water District has proposed an alternative to the adjudication. And uh, the board president and myself went to the city council, Ventura City Council, on Monday, March 4th, and requested that they put this on a future agenda. We attended two community council meetings, one on March 6th and one last night, to uh, kind of pitch it to the local community about how this is a better way to do it, save a lot of money, do it quicker. <clears throat> and then this morning, uh, our board president, Peggy Wiles, and our general manager, Bert Rapp, met with the mayor to talk about this. and. We're mildly encouraged that he's interested in pursuing this. If it looks like it'll be uh, quicker and less expense than what the uh, mediation or the other adjudication might be. So the next step, I guess, from his standpoint would be uh, see what happens on April 22nd. Uh, I'll probably go into that meeting also. Um, and they will be making a report to the city council in executive session in, in May. And if it looks like things are going along well, then maybe we don't, there's not so much interest in all, our, alter, our, our alternative to the adjudication. If it doesn't look like it's going so swell, uh, he's interested in working with us to try to uh, make that happen and set up some kind of a, uh, an agency that could form a, a, a benefit assessment district and go through kind of our outline of the task. So we're at this point mildly encouraged. Both of these things can go on at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive, the mediation and the uh, alternative. So anyway, that's kind of an update for where we are. Thanks. Uh, what was the status of the um, uh, motion to stay? It hasn't been addressed yet. The, um, where they're waiting, what, <clears throat> the first step is to do this mediation, and they've hired a, a judge to do that. Okay. And uh, they're fighting now about how do you pay for the cost of this uh, mediator. Uh, so if they can work that out, then they'll go ahead and... Uh, if it doesn't work out, then it will be assigned to a, a judge that's uh, familiar with complex litigation, like Peter mentioned. They've already got someone I didn't identify, but hasn't been uh, appointed yet. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. is, the, is the Baykeeper a party to this mediation, or is that a they are <clears throat> They are a party to that, yes. Uh -huh. They're one of the probably 20 or 30 attorneys that are involved with it, yeah. And I've been trying to get, uh, working with the Santa Barbara Channel Keeper to sit down and talk about our alternative also, and I'm probably going to have a meeting with uh, Kira Redmond and uh, Ben Pitterly next week maybe to talk about it and see what their interest is. I think they're sort of more interested based on what uh, uh, Russ McLaughlin said at the conference last week that they're probably more interested in establishing a precedent, an in-stream flow precedent in this litigation to try to get a court decision and then appeal it and have it become uh, law than really settling something cheap and quick. Thank you very much, Bruce. Appreciate that. Okay, for the conjunctive use agreement, uh, last month we put out a spreadsheet uh, with a draft um, proposal. And did you receive any comments at all, uh, Cece? No. John, did you? No. So we have no um, comments. Does the board have any comments on the? Uh, draft conjunctive use agreement <coughs> spreadsheet. And all we're going to do tonight is talk about this and then we'll take it to Casitas to try to forge uh, 
maybe a, a claymore, uh, you know, those big broad swords. Not a claymore mine. Yeah, no. A sword, okay. Broad sword. I'm well, go ahead. No, you well, I've looked at it, and it is, there's not a lot of information here. I mean, it's a concept, mm -hmm. but how this concept would really work and how it would impact the basin, it's a, to me, it seems like a big departure from managing the basin on a safe yield basis and managing the basin in this particular method. Um, you know, I was involved in, in getting Golden State out of here, and one of the arguments that we had, one of the other benefits of having them replaced by Casitas was that it would give the community an opportunity to better manage the basin because Golden State was somewhat of an obstacle to, to uh, doing that. But I don't know that we ever in had in, in mind that Casitas would begin to pump water out of the basin at this level, and this, I mean, this is essentially exporting water. So this is a concept that I think really we need a lot more information on and a lot more discussion here to see how, the, I, I see how this benefits Casitas, but how does this benefit the basin? The conjunctive use implies mutual benefit, and I, how, do you, how do you mean, how does it appear to you that it would um, allow Casitas to export water? Well, you would take more water than is used on the basin during certain times. I assume you're going to move it. We well, can't. I mean, the, the law, the law uh, would disallow that. Well, Unless this gonna... board says there's surplus water and we give the, uh, someone a permit to do that. But how are you going to pump 10,000 acre feet collectively when the demand on the basin isn't 10,000 acre feet? No, I think that's just it when it's, when the basin is at, um, you know, when it's flowing out of the water, uh, there's no restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. Flowing so, out of the ground. Yeah, Russ, or, and, I mean, the, this table to me, that got close. Uh, a lot of work went into it, but it seems overly simplistic on a line item. It's kind of, whereas I think you get into multiple scenarios where, you know, you could be coming out of a year where we go up 15%, but we're still in stage two drought mm -hmm. from a casita standpoint. And you know, perhaps if we hadn't had the fire sediment, we would be artesianing right now. And in that case, you would be better off pumping it out of the San Antonio things rather than letting it come out of the lake into Casitas's things. So that's, so I understand how, and I don't, in that regard, you wouldn't be exporting mm. the water. As a matter of fact, Casitas is importing a lot into the basin, as they always have been since Casitas was built. Um, it gets there via septic tanks, let's be honest, um, for the most part. But uh, so I get it. I just don't, I think it can't be as linear. It's got to be, there's got to be so many branches involved in making this re reality. If you're going to, if you're going to diagram it all onto a, a piece of paper, it, it branches and comes together, whereas if you just, the reality of managing it uh, logically, I don't know that I could ever diagram it. Well, what we tried to do was correlate um, extraction uh, modifications to the basin somewhat uh, related to the ground, the uh, lake levels, and the the um, water efficiency and allocation program um, levels, just as a but, but, simple basis to start with. But I don't think that that our ground, while it it might have a high correlation, it doesn't necessarily have perfect correlation. We could be in stage three 
and be in great conditions in the basin, or for whatever reason, you could be in mediocre basin conditions and you could be in great conditions at the lake. And I don't think this captures that. In other words, you think that you think this is very simplistic and it needs yes. to be much more complicated. Or we just get to, to uh, discussing it and, and doing it on the fly. Well, maybe it's, time, maybe it's time we set up um, an ad hoc committee for you to work with Jordan and try to make it more complicated. Unf yeah, unfortunately. My, uh, <laughs> I, let me be really simple-minded uh, because I'm not a water guy, <laughs> but my understanding of the history was the water basin was suffering back in, what, the 50s and the 60s. Uh, or actually way before that, and when they started building things like Matillaha Dam and Casitas Dam was to be the backup supply because of this, uh, you know, periodic drought. And it seems like if we're, this is uh, taking us to a level of making the basin under some circumstances the backup to the lake rather than the other way around, Mm -hmm. and, the, well, I, and, and the confusion I have is, is that I keep hearing all about we want to have in-stream flow. And when we have in-stream flow, it's during those good years where there's plenty of water. But if we're pumping it down, uh, then aren't we fighting with one of our goals? Or are we in, at odds with one of the things the law requires us to do? I, well, no, I, I guess that's why Jim I, says it, makes it, more, it does make it more complicated. I don't, I don't see that we're going to be uh, looking for ways to exceed the safe yield of the basin. Um, we've already established that in the um, um, modeling that we, that we did with uh, DBSNA. Um, what we're trying to do is demonstrate the conjunctive use potential and also demonstrate to Department of Water Resources that we actually have a means to um, govern the pumper's extractions as the, the um, water availability on both fronts uh, are changing. Isn't a, certainly a big factor in this or a looming factor that all this uh, potential of adjudication with the lawsuits I mean, as I understand it, when the basin is full, or nearly full, you know, there is stream flow increases. That water is seeping into the creek for those fish in the lower reaches of the Ventura River. So when, you, when we talk about, uh, you know, legislating or uh, creating conjunctive use agreements, I mean, it seems like this thing Bruce is talking about and whatnot, what we're, what we're facing in the whole valley, certainly is an aspect or a factor in that. If you've got a, you take water, you drop the basin, all of a sudden less water goes into the creek. Is that too simplistic? Well, we don't think so. Uh, that's the difference between the perched aquifers and the lower aquifers that are being drawn upon for uh, irrigation mm -hmm. or and domestic use. How much, how is that, how much is that supported so far? Is that just an <coughs> idea or a theory? Well, we're working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're trying to show that to be uh, an existential uh, use of, um, how the water actually gets from uh, the basin to the mm -hmm. San Antonio Creek. So water could be taken from the perched aquifers without affecting other parts of the aquifer which would contribute to the Other stream way flow. way around, Peter. Mm -hmm. We could take water from the lower depths and not affect the perched water. I see. Okay. Well, I think it, from my standpoint, I, if you know me, I've never been a big fan of the uh, boom and bust method of managing water supplies. And that's kind of what this is. I mean, this is pump like crazy when the basin's full and then squeeze everybody back when it goes down. And the whole concept of a safe yield is to try to maintain some equilibrium so that you're not going into a, to a critical phase, you know, as few times as you possibly can. So it's, I mean, I envisioned, you know, five years ago when we were dealing with Golden State that the benefit Casitas would bring to managing this basin is that when levels were critical or when we were in a position where we might be exceeding safe yield, 
they would have the ability to back off their pumping, which Golden State would refuse to do. Casitas has to make up for, you know, if a private well user doesn't have enough water, Casitas delivers water to them. So to me, it would make sense that if we want to keep the basin at equilibrium, the biggest controller on that is Casitas. I mean, they're having the ability to pump from 1,200 to 2,000 acre feet of water to get their wells fixed. But they don't have that kind of demand, but probably won't ever again with, you know, I think a lot of water conservation has gone, become permanent in Ojai, so I don't know you're ever going to see 2,000 acre feet of demand in Ojai again. From the lake, you mean? From anywhere. Oh. I mean, in Ojai okay. proper. So I think there's elements, there's new elements that I think we should examine. And, you know, the how permanent the water conservation efforts are is one, and I think they're going to be. We have state legislation that's going to, to squeeze it even farther. Uh, so how much demand is there really going to be by the city of Ojai and the, the improvement district? And that water then can be used by agricultural pumpers primarily they're regulated right now simply the way I understand it by the level of the basin. So if the basin goes down, their yield goes down from their wells. So trying to maintain that level at a, at a point where their yield is, can sustain their, their particular operation, to me would be the target. It, 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 and I don't have the exact answer, but I think this is far more complicated than this and we really need to discuss what the impacts of this might be, how it's going to relate to Casitas in the future. Casitas right now is doing studies to determine what their, what their yield is. And so until we know what their yield is, trying to do something conjunctively is, you know, it's going to be up in the air. What is, what is the uh, value or urgency of the conjunctive use agreement. It seems like that's sort of creating a formula in advance and an agreement with others for how the water is going to be extracted as opposed to what goes on in the state where people who have water rights in the north during the wet winters then can wheel water to other, and sell their water to other places. Could we not do something similar to that here locally where the, when the, we feel like the basin is healthy enough to do that then more pumping and when it's not, or is that what this is trying to, to formula, uh, by formula, figure out how that, when those times would occur? Basically, the idea of the conjunctive use agreement is to show the Department of Water Resources uh, that there's some teeth in our groundwater management plan. That's it, basically. We, when, you have to figure out some way. Come on up, Regina. I, I just wanted to add uh, a conjunctive use agreement that includes the target of in-stream flows. Some of the money that was, well, let's knock on wood, will be awarded April 4th. Some of that I believe we wrote in to help discover through OBGMA. So you may have a little bit of pocket of money to help get you a little bit further in this uh, more complicated narrative that you're trying to unfold. Um, Great. We'll have a meeting in Tahiti. <laughs> um, uh, but I think it, it's, it's a critical conversation, and I hope you, I support you guys to move into it a little bit deeper. Well, it, sound, it does sound like we need to have further discussion about this, right, Richard? Yeah, I, what I would like to start with is for the board to discuss what the goal is. Um, I understand we're trying to satisfy, you know, the state that we're doing our job, but what is the goal as far as managing the basin? What, what do we want the outcome of this, of any conjunctive use to be? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's the thing we should talk about first and then see how a conjunctive use arrangement might help us achieve that. I th I'm going to say it off the top of my head. Um, the conjunctive use agreement is to provide protection for both sources of water. About all I can think of. Bill, you want to talk? Can, can I mention something real quick? I, Go ahead. I, Richard kind of took my, my term there, goals, but I also I've used what we call policy principles in the past. Mm -hmm. And the board sits down, maps out these principles of what are you trying to accomplish in, in your program. 
And then you may want to also try and bring that to the community is another way of saying this is what we're looking at as a community. They have different ideas and input that they want to involve in this. And, you know, even tonight I've heard, well, we want to reduce casitas imports. We want to increase the basin use. We don't want to exceed the safe yield. We don't want to export water. I mean, those are all principles that I think, you know, what are the outcomes? You know, we want to preserve in stream flows, those kind of things. And I think, mm -hmm. I think the board would be benef uh, benefit by having some kind of a structure to put those principles into place. And John just anticipated what I was about to say, which was, yes, I, I, this, please, I'm requesting as a citizen, as a member of the city council with a vital interest in all of this, please put this as an agenda item for the community to ha hear a presentation and to be able to weigh in on developing the set of goals, the set of principles. Because yes, the management plan should flow from that, no pun intended. And uh, I, 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 th I really think that, uh, please, please put this as a focus for a future agenda, to, oh, a community discussion. Thank Actually, you. Actually, that's what, I, I, I agree with you and we'll do it again, but that's what we did last month. We put it out there for people to review and comment. Give us an idea of what, what I'm gonna uh, respectfully take issue with the idea of a spreadsheet being, how, do you have any comments on the spreadsheet? As opposed to an agenda item that very specifically and explicitly says, this is for defining goals for this, this basin. Okay. You know, I just think it's a way that you present it that you can get um, input from the community focused on those on those principles. Well, okay, that's. I guess we need, have a lot more to do here at OBGMA before we take it to uh, Casitas and hammer out some sort of an, an agreement to see whether or not it'll all work. No, just, just my thought. Okay, thank you. It's good thought. Uh, so we'll we'll continue this um, on the agenda and. Um, John, you want to try to develop some language for the agenda item? Yeah, d does the board want to try and develop this, these principles within a, a board <coughs> environment, or do you want to have a special meeting to try and do that at some point? Just You don't have to answer that tonight, but I mean, think about that. It might be worthwhile because we could a spend a lot, a lot of time on this, or right, even Richard? a community workshop. Yeah, it's, it's a complicated issue. It is. That's good. Uh, maybe we'll have a special meeting then. And just make it a workshop, have the, have the public attend, and they can provide their input. I can see that uh, Richard's concern with the um, second to the last um, column to the right, where at the top where it says groundwater first, excess of basin safe yield okay, 10,000 acre feet. That's probably not a good idea. Our, our safe yield is, is uh, 5,000 acre feet, and we ought to stick to it, right, Richard? Yeah, yeah. I mean... I think that that safe yield number is something we've done a lot of work on. Yeah, we have. We have a lot of data, and we shouldn't abandon that as a, as a guiding principle. Well, um, I think the idea from uh, Jordan was that the use of the water when it's artesianing is um, use it before it's gone, and then we'll get back to the safe yield. Yeah, and, and I, I, underst I, I understand that, but in today's world, um, I think we're going to run into a, a hornet's nest when we start talking about doing that kind of thing. Because even, you know, we talked about at a prior meeting, asked Jordan, you know, could he um, show us any relationship between basin level and, and, and stream flows in the San Antonio Creek? And he is going to come back to us right. with that. And rainfall. And the thing about the basin, in, in, in the way I understand it, the basin, the stream flows in during the wet periods can be affected by basin level. Even though the basin may not overflow to the stream, the amount of water the basin is able to accept in percolation when it's higher is probably less. So the stream flows are going to be more. Well, when the basin is lower, I would would suspect it probably percolates much faster. Just, just a casual observation. But right. so, winter flows, wet period flows are part of this environment, and seem to be a you know a, a critical interest to, to uh, people that are concerned about in, in stream benefits. You know, dry creeks are pretty typical in the summertime. 
but dry creeks in the winter are not. So I think we have to understand that, that differential between those two seasons and the fact that the environment is used to wet and dry cycles. The, the environment benefits from these big rain years that we have and it seems to be able to survive the dry periods with or without us. So I think those are things we have to think about <coughs> before we think about, you know, running that basin up and down like that. It just, I think it's just going to require a lot more thought. Okay. Um, pleasure of the board. Do we put this on the uh, agenda for next month, um, or should we schedule a, a special meeting and have a longer time period to deal with it? Do we have the special meeting just earlier on the same date? Sure. And then spill over into the regular meeting if we need more time. Or we can limit um, we can limit the agenda items uh, on a regular board day and just talk about this thing. Yeah, we have to give Jordan enough time to be prepared for this. So. Well, he's telling me in a t text. Let's make that presentation next month. Has he heard our discussion? Yes, he has. <laughs> well, and, and Hi, I'll, he's, he's monitoring. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got a smart so TV in the room. room. <laughs> I can hear everything going on in the house. Uh, and, and I'll put some <laughs> thoughts together and type them up, and I'll send it to Jordan, and maybe it'll help him a little bit. And That's good. All right. So you don't want to have the ad hoc committee? Maybe we uh, could start half an hour early next month. And yeah. Sounds good. Is the room available? I guess that's a big question. So. Oh, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Okay. We just need to verify. I've been here at four before. Okay. All right. Um, I'll check, uh, without anything else on that topic, we'll move on to informational items. Uh, agenda items for future meetings. I wrote myself a note. What does the board think about um, sending a letter to DWR, the Sigma section, uh, and asking them, um, are they are, I don't know, I don't know how to put this, but are they going to respect the law uh, when they say that um, local agencies know know best how to do things, mm. or not? What do you think, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> The trend in housing is I not really supporting that. Well, I mean, it was clear that both in the in the statute and the and the regulations, they've stated that they think that local agencies uh, know best how to run their their agencies. No, I, I it would characterize it as they they are giving the ability to local agencies to run their operations, so, so to speak, uh, unless um, it's demonstrated that, well, at least in their opinion, it's not working, and then they're going to step in and do it. I mean, that's the way Sigma's set up, right? Mm -hmm. Do it, Local level, we support that. We, you know, get your plans put together. Show us that your plans make good sense and are going to work. Uh, if you don't do your plan or if you don't come up with a plan that we think is adequate, you know, we're going to step in. I think we used to call that the carrot and the stick. But yeah, that, that's basically the... That's do I have to come in there and <laughs> yes. deal with it? Yes, I do that with my children. So uh, that might not be a good idea, you're, I guess you're saying, right? Yes, sir. Well, are you really asking whether to write a letter and ask if they... <laughs> what the heck are they doing? Yeah, are they about, is the alternate going to be accepted here soon is that what yeah yeah the last conversation I had with them is said they plan to have them reviewed by the end of March early April so we're right there <laughs> <laughs> so let's yeah, let's, let's still table, no word let's table that letter okay. for a month <laughs> firstly I'd well, leave them alone yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah right <laughs> Maybe that's a good idea. Be yeah. careful what you okay. ask for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't make them come in and tell so them. So since we're going to be uh, dealing with the uh, conjunctive use agreement, I wouldn't suggest the board um, putting any of the future agenda items on the agenda right now, since we're going to be dealing primarily with uh, um, the conjunctive use agreement. 
Yeah, we'll still need to, for next month that we do this a regular meeting. We'll still need to do the, the financials. Yeah, like that's, that. That, those are okay. minutes. Those kind of things. Okay, uh, then uh, 10B is the LAFCO resolution. <coughs> Why are they sending this to us? I, it doesn't make sense to me. Are they just telling us that they're raising their fees again? I don't know. We we just thought it'd be included so you knew what was going on with LAFCO. Because they do they do charge all local agencies to support their operations. They do, and that's probably. They don't charge LBGA. They don't. Shh, don't say that too loud, okay? Yeah. They charge our water conservation six dollars. Criminy. Now with the postage. <laughs> All right. Well, um, the, does the board have any comment on the LAFCO resolution? If not, we will adjourn this meeting at 612. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good night, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Jordan. Yeah. Jordan, you're part of the deep state now. <laughs>